Thank you all. Hello, Dalfast. My name is Milica, and I'm a web developer from Serbia. Right now, I'm working with Google on writing about performance and developer tools, so things like Webpack and Lighthouse. I'm Bibi Digital on Twitter, and you can also find me on different corners of the internet, like Tumblr, Medium, Powerlifting Reddit. I actually learned HTML and CSS by tweaking MySpace. I got interested in performance last year when I was interning at Mozilla. I worked on a browser engine called Servo, which makes browsing fast by making better use of modern hardware. It can do that because it was written in Rust. Rust is a new systems programming language that's kind of like C, but cool. So I got to learn a bit of Rust last year, and I liked it. But I also love the web, and I didn't want to move to native development. <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about how we can run native code on the web, why would you want to do that, and what does it all mean for the future of web development. <clears throat> this will be your gentle intro to WebAssembly, what it is, how it works, and how you can benefit from it, even if you continue to write JS only. There will be some cool examples, some weird ones, and some practical, one, practical ones too, so let's get started. In every browser, whether you use Chrome, Firefox, Edge, or Safari, code is interpreted and executed by a JavaScript engine, which only runs JavaScript. Unfortunately, JavaScript is not ideal for every task that we want to perform. That's where WebAssembly steps in. WebAssembly is a new type of code that can be run in modern browsers. It was created to get better performance on the web. It's a low-level binary format. It's small, it has a small size, so it's fast to load and fast to execute. You do not write WebAssembly. You compile other higher-level languages to it. Just so we're all on the same page, assembly typically refers to humanly readable languages that are similar to machine code. Machine code is what your processor understands, a bunch of numbers. Every higher-level programming language needs to get translated down to machine code in order to run on the processor. Different kinds of processor architectures need different machine codes and different kinds of assembly for each of them. Even though it's called WebAssembly, it's not quite an assembly language because it's not meant for any specific machine. It's for the browsers. And when you're delivering code to be executed in the browser, you don't know what kind of machines will your code be running on. So WebAssembly is the language for a conceptual machine that's the least common denominator of popular real-world hardware. When the browser downloads the WebAssembly binary, it can quickly turn it into any machine's assembly. This is what WebAssembly looks like. It has a textual format, .wat, that you can easily read, but binary format is what you actually deliver to the browser, .wasm. What WebAssembly enables you to do is take things like C, C++, or Rust code and compile it into what's called a WebAssembly module. You can load that module into your application and call it from JavaScript. WebAssembly is not a replacement for JavaScript. It works alongside JavaScript. So now that you know what it is, let's talk about why do we need WebAssembly. The short answer is performance. Think about cases where you, want to, where you need to use software outside of the browser. Things like video games, 3D rendering, music production. These applications require a high degree of performance, and that kind of performance is hard to get from JavaScript. JavaScript started as a simple scripting language meant to bring some interactivity to the web full of lightweight hypertext documents. This is the first website ever made by Tim Berners-Lee, so it's just like a bunch of text with some links. At that time, JavaScript was designed to be easy to learn and easy to write. It wasn't designed to be fast. 
Over the years, browsers added optimizations in the way they interpret JavaScript that brought major performance improvements. As it got faster, the list of things that you could do with the browser started expanding. We got new APIs, things like interactive graphics, video streaming, offline browsing, and many more. More and more rich applications started coming to the web, applications that were previously desktop only. So today, you can easily edit documents and send email from your browser, but there are still areas where JavaScript performance is a struggle. Video games are especially challenging because they have to coordinate not only audio and video, but also physics and artificial intelligence. Being able to reach the level of performance to run games on the web efficiently would open the doors to bringing many other applications to the web. And that's what WebAssembly set out to do. It's a good fit not only for video games, but also CAD applications, virtual and augmented reality, audio and video codecs, VPN, encryption, remote desktop, the list goes on. You can see it on the official WebAssembly website. But why would we want to do all this stuff on the web? Why is the web so attractive? To me, the beauty of the web is that it's kind of like magic. It works anywhere. There's no download and no installation. Browsers have security properties that keep code running in them from messing with your system. That's a thing called sandbox. And my favorite, sharing on the web is as easy as it gets. Links are just clickable, clickable strings that you can put anywhere. And we all know that's not how app stores work. So the web is the only truly universal platform that makes your code accessible on any device. For us developers, that means you can maintain a single code base, and it makes updates simple. Because of all of this, and the interactivity that the web offers, we went from hypertext and a simple scripting language all the way to an incredibly powerful and popular platform filled with amazing applications. But until now, it was still fundamentally powered by the same scripting language that wasn't designed to do all this in the first place. <laughs> so what does WebAssembly bring to the table? There are three main things, speed, portability, and flexibility. Let's talk a bit about speed. WebAssembly was designed for speed. Its binaries are much smaller than textual JavaScript files. Because of their size, they are faster to download, and this is especially important on slow networks. <coughs> Browsers are also working on streaming compilation, aka compiling during download, so for small binaries like this, this basically means that by the time code is downloaded, it's already compiled. They are also faster to decode and execute. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. Variable types don't have to be defined up front, and it doesn't need to be compiled ahead. This makes it easy and fast to write, but it also means that JavaScript engine has a lot more work to do. It has to compile, parse, and optimize the code as it's being executed on the page. Parsing JavaScript involves transforming plain text into a structure called abstract syntax tree and turning that into binary format. WebAssembly is delivered as binary, so decoding it happens much faster. It's statically typed, so Unlike with JavaScript, the engine doesn't need to speculate during compilation about which types are going to be used. Most of the optimization with WebAssembly happens during the compilations from the source code before it even gets into the browser. Memory is managed manually, just like in languages like C and C++, so there's no garbage collection either. This is a relative time spent processing JavaScript and WebAssembly in the engine. All of this gives better and more reliable performance. 
the execution time of JavaScript binaries is just 20% slower than the execution of the same native code. Mm. Sorry, all. Okay. Let's talk about portability a bit. This was one of the main goals when designing WebAssembly. To run an application on a device, it has to be compatible with the device's processor architecture and operating system. This means compiling the source code for every combination of operating system and CPU architecture that you want to support. With WebAssembly, there's only one compilation step, and your app will run in every modern browser. Good use case is porting legacy applications and open source libraries to the web. There is a huge amount of C++ libraries and open source applications out there, and now with WebAssembly, you can make it all available on the web. And C++ specifically is a language that's supported on practically every platform, including iOS and Android, which means you could use it as a common language for both your web and mobile deployments. Another exciting thing is about WebAssembly is that it brings flexibility in writing for the web. Until now, JavaScript has been the only fully supported language. With WebAssembly, web developers will be able to choose different languages for writing for the web, and also more developers will be able to write code for the web. JavaScript will still be the best choice for most use cases, but now you will have an option to drop down to a specialized language once in a while when you really need a boost. And also, parts like UI and app logic can be written in JavaScript, while a specific core functionality can be written in WebAssembly. If you have an existing app that's struggling with performance, you will be able to optimize those bottlenecks in a language that's better suited, suited for the problem. Right now, fully supported languages are C, C++, and Rust, but many others are in the works. .NET and Kotlin already shipped experimental support, and, there, and the list goes on. This has a lot to do with the features that are still coming to WebAssembly, and they will make it a more suitable target for many other languages. Now that you know what it is, let's talk a bit about how does it work. I said there will be dragons in my talk, and this is it. This is the logo of LLVM, a modular compiler <coughs> toolchain that you can use with many different languages. You can output WebAssembly with it. A simple, simpler tool is called Mscripten, and it's based on LLVM. You can use this one for C and C++. Rust Nightly has its own compiler called Rust-C that can output WebAssembly directly. So if you have a hello world written in C, this is the command that will give you a WebAssembly binary. MCC is in scripting command. Then we have hello C, which is our source file. Dash S, Vasm equals one, tells in scripting that we wanted to output WebAssembly, and dash O, hello.html specifies our output file. What you get is a WebAssembly binary along with JavaScript and HTML files. This might look weird, but you actually need HTML and JS because WebAssembly doesn't have direct access to any platform APIs. That means the DOM, WebGL, WebAudio, or anything. To work with these, and even to display the output of WebAssembly on your web page, you have to go through JavaScript. So Mscripten creates the glue code that sets up your WebAssembly module and makes communicating with web APIs possible. Then the HTML file loads that and displays the output of your WebAssembly code in a text area or a canvas. Now, you can think of WebAssembly binaries as regular app modules. Browser can fetch, 
download, and execute them. They have imports and exports that allow you to work with them the same way you work with JavaScript objects. You can call WebAssembly functions in JavaScript code. And you can call JavaScript functions in WebAssembly modules. Now, it's not all that great. It has only four primitive types, and they are all numbers, integers, and floats. This means that passing more complex data types between JavaScript and WebAssembly is not quite simple. If you want to pass a string, for example, like hello world, you have to encode it into an array of numbers and then pass a pointer to it. It has no direct access to external JS variables, so it can only read and write from its own linear memory. In, in order to access JS variables, you have to either copy them into memory or pass them through call stack. Right now, making a lot of calls between JS and WebAssembly is not very fast. That's because the engine has to do a lot of setup work each time. Firefox did a great job recently and made these calls, uh, I think, maybe like 100 times faster, but other browsers still have work to do. So right now, you should think of WebAssembly as a system that runs well in isolation. You can off use it to offload big chunks of work. You're probably wondering now whether you can use this in production today. And the answer is yes. WebAssembly support rolled out last year, and it's currently supported in all major browsers. It's supported for 80% of global users and even 86% of users on desktop. As a fallback for other browsers, you can use a thing called asm.js that can be also outputted from Emscripten. Asm is a subset of JavaScript that works only with numbers. So that means no strings, no objects, or anything. It was a format that directly led to creation of WebAssembly. If you've ever tried to upload a huge photo to Facebook, you went through WebAssembly, probably. Facebook is using this old C library called libjpeg for image compression in these cases. Uh, I think libjpeg is almost 40 years old, and they were actually compiling it to asm.js before. But right now, you, if you have a modern browser, you're getting WebAssembly here. And also, if you've ever played audio or video file on Wikipedia, they're also using uh, open source codecs that are compiled to WebAssembly and ASM.js for that. It's time for some examples. I mentioned video games as a big goal for WebAssembly, and both Unity and Unreal Engine 4 already have working demos. You can play a game of tanks in the browser. I'm going to try to show this to you right now, but it might not. OK, uh, I don't think my laptop can handle this. But I can show you a video of a Zen Garden from, hmm, OK, maybe not quite yet. There is also a demo from Unreal Engine uh, called the Zen Garden. and. It's a Japanese garden with a whole lot of interactive elements, falling leaves, fluttering butterflies, blossoming cherries, things that are very computationally intensive. And they're running inside of browser with WebAssembly right now. There are also other interesting demos online, like a video editor, ray tracer, facial recognition algorithm. So this is ray tracing. That's a technique that uh, Madeleine can probably tell you a bit more about. And here we have a video editor right here in the browser that's doing applying filters in real time. This is very computationally intensive. And you could do this with JavaScript before, but with WebAssembly, the performance is many times fast, faster, and it works very, very smoothly. 
There are some cool filters. You should probably check it out on your own later. People are also doing weird things with this. Someone ported Windows 2000, and now we have an operating system in the browser. You can actually go to this link. I'll leave it after my talk. And you can load Windows, play Minesweeper. Maybe someone is a fan of pinball. Yeah, pinball is a great one, right? There are also big apps out there using WebAssembly. Figma is an interface design tool that runs in the browser and allows designers to easily collaborate on their work. It was mostly written in C++, and it has a 2D WebGL rendering engine that can handle very large documents. The UI and app logic are actually written in TypeScript and React. Initially, they were using ASM.js for compiling C++ to the web, and once they switched to WebAssembly, their load time improved by three times, regardless of the document size. Another great example is AutoCAD, software which is used mostly in engineering fields for things like floor plans, piping designs, electrical circuits. It's written in C++, it has been around for 35 years, and last year with WebAssembly, they were able to port this huge code base to the web without needing to rewrite anything. So now you can actually use professional CAD software in the browser. So this WebAssembly thing obviously works, but it's going to get even better. Let's see what lies ahead. The browser, browsers are already working on new features. Support for threading and garbage collection is coming. This will make WebAssembly more suitable target for languages like Java, C Sharp, and Go. Another important goal for WebAssembly is creating debugging tools that will support, that will support showing source code for the WebAssembly modules. But even if you continue to work with JavaScript only, you can still benefit from WebAssembly and the speed boost that it brings through improved libraries and frameworks. Soon enough, you'll be able to download and import these modules like any other ECMAScript module with a script tag <coughs> type module, and you can simply call those functions from JavaScript. WebAssembly modules are already in the NPM registry, and it's possible that in the future, you'll be able to easily use open source software written in any language right from the NPM. And as for the frameworks, Vue.js is actually already investigating implementation of their Glimmer engine in WebAssembly, and also there's potential for React to implement some of their <laughs> core features in WebAssembly, things like diffing algorithm that could be much faster if it was written in an, another language. Now, JavaScript will still have its place in web development. It's a great language, flexible enough to build almost anything. Those few gaps that it cannot fill can now be filled with WebAssembly. So this is not the end of JavaScript. I think it's a new beginning for the web. If you want to learn more about this topic, how WebAssembly works, what are new features that are coming, you should check out Code Cartoons by Lynn Clark, who is my mentor at Mozilla. And I won't be putting my slides online, but if you want to read through this at your own pace, you should check out the blog post I've published on Medium. Thanks for having me, and thanks to everyone from organization who did a great job with this conference. <laughs>